Hi everyone, this is Mindy Egan and welcome back to another video for Lawn Fawn. Today I'm going to be creating a double slider surprise baby card. I'm also going to share a few tips along the way of what I would have done differently with this card. So I will share that with you a little later on in the video. First, I'm going to start by coloring my images that I'm going to use for my baby card. My niece is having a baby shower this weekend. So this is the card I created for her. I used one stamp set and that is Swan Soiree. I stamped out multiple images in jet black ink onto 80 pound white cardstock. And then I'm coming in and coloring the images with my Copic markers. You can see I have quite a few of the cattails stamped out on here and that's really just to fill in the scene. To color those, I used just one or two shades of green and I just added a line of the darker color to look like shading. I really didn't do a lot of shading with it. And same thing for the top of the cattail. I added just a line of a light color and a line of a darker color. I didn't get real carried away with the coloring because I wanted kind of the focus to be that fun double slider surprise element. So for the flowers, I just came in with a pink and a yellow. And for my swans, I'm just taking a light gray, or this is actually a warm gray, W2. And I'm adding just flicks of color to the wings and a little line of color to the back of the heads. So very, very simple coloring. Before I die cut out these images, I had some white space towards the top. So I placed in kind of that lake uh, stamp image from the stamp set. And I'm gonna first stamp this in Kitty Pool ink from Lawn Fawn. So this is a really nice light blue and I wanna two tone this. So then I'm taking a peacock ink in a little mini cube and I'm tilting it and just going around the very outer edges of that kind of pond or lake stamped image. Once I have kind of just the outline of that inked up with the peacock ink, I'm going to take a blending brush and just lightly go over those areas to kind of help blend that in to that lighter color that's underneath. And then I'm going to stamp that down on top of the image I already stamped. So you can add as much ink or as little ink as you want. Maybe come back in with your blending brush and it's just going to give a really nice contrast to the color. Once that's done, then I'm going to bring in the coordinating dies for these images. I'm going to line them all up, hold them in place with post-it tape, and then run these all through my die cut machine. And then I'm going to set these images off on the side and work on the rest of my card. So here I already have die cut out two panels that are going to be the pieces that slide out. I have two panels here that have a score line on them that's going to form our pocket. And then also our track. So these are all die cut from white cardstock 80 pound. The first thing I'm going to do is fold along that score line and just reinforce that with a bone folder. This is what our slider mechanism is going to fit into. So I'm just going to get the scoring out of the way before I move on. Then I work on decorating those two slider pieces that are going to slide out on the sides. So I am taking those pieces again, die cutting two of them from mermaid cardstock. And then out of that, I am using the stitched hillside border dies. And I'm going to die cut that out of that mermaid cardstock. This is going to fit on those panels perfectly. And it's going to create kind of our lake scene. So I'll do that for those two side pieces. And I'm also going to come in and die cut out one of those pocket pieces from the mermaid cardstock. And die cut that as well. I am not worried that these lines or these borders don't match up when they pull out. I don't think she's going to notice. And I don't think it's that big of a deal. So then to add a little interest to these pieces, I'm going to take a blending brush and some of that peacock ink, and I'm gonna just lightly blend that on coming from the top of the water going down, just kind of fading off into that mermaid cardstock. That just adds a little bit of interest and contrast to the entire scene. So I do that to all three of my pieces. And then since she is going to be having a baby girl, I thought I would work with a pink color. So I'm bringing in this front panel that has that flap on the bottom and I am just ink blending on some worn lipstick distress oxide ink. And I will also do that to those two smaller panels that are going to pull out from the side. So these are the skies for my background. This is just setting the scene and I think ink blending it in the color that she's having, I think is going to be really cute. So then I'm taking those pieces that I die cut from the mermaid cardstock and I'm adding them right to the bottom of those panels. You could see how they line up great with the stitching and the curved edges. 
Now, before I get too far ahead of myself, I want to stamp on some sentiments. So I picked out some sentiments off of that Swan Soiree stamp set. I lined them up on my panels. So this panel I'm stamping is going to be on the right hand side. And I left room to have some of my uh, cattails kind of coming up from the water. So I stamped that in the jet black ink. Then I'm going to bring in the other panel. This is going to pull out to the left hand side. And I'm also stamping that in the jet black ink. Now, before I stamped my front panel, I realized I needed to add my little tabs. So you're taking this piece that's going to cut the tab. You line it up with the very edge of your panel that has that flap on it. Hold that in place with the post-it tape. Run that through your die cut machine. This is going to allow the recipient to be able to pull those panels out. So the slider surprise. And you want to do that to both ends. And you also want to do it to the other piece that we die cut. I forgot to do that right away, but I do it later on in the video. So once I have those tab areas die cut out, then I know where I can put my sentiment and where my images can go. So I stamp the sentiment in the center of that. And now I'm going to come in and just add my cattails to each slot, each side of those pieces that are going to pull out. Now I don't want to add any foam tape to this because these do have to kind of slide back in. Now we move on to the actual track of our double slider surprise. So what we need to do is first take some of the 1 8 of an inch double sided tape and we need to add it to the top and the bottom of our track on both sides. So I'm going to just take a strip of this off, line it up with the very bottom of our track and then make sure that you're pushing down on this really well once you get that on there. You want to make sure it's kind of burnished into it so it's going to adhere really well to the cardstock. So once again to the top and bottom of one side and then I'm going to flip it over and add it to the top and bottom of the other side. Then we can bring in our plastic piece. So here I have just a plastic bag that I trimmed down and it is two and a quarter inches. Now mine is a little short. Uh, I did make it work but Give yourself a little bit more wiggle room than I did. I don't know how much this measures, but you want to make sure you kind of have some wiggle room to play with. Then we're adding that 1 8 of an inch score tape or that double sided tape to one end. I'm going to flip that over so that that tape is facing my mat. Then I'm going to bring in my track. I'm going to put that on top of my plastic and I'm going to just fold over one end. So now my tape is facing up. And the other side is going to just gently hug over and overlap to where that tape is. You don't want it too tight and you don't want it too loose. We want this track to move real nice. So I'm going to remove the backing of that double sided tape. And then I'm going to just gently guide the other piece over and let it just kind of fall down over that exposed adhesive. And then push down, burnish that really well together and trim off any excess that's hanging from the bag. Then I'm going to take this and kind of move that plastic back and forth. So once I have that moving really well, we are going to slide that seam over to the left hand side and we're going to add some double sided tape to this. Now this is kind of getting into the part where I think I could have done better. So we're going to take double sided tape and just kind of in a little bit from the edge, we're going to add a strip of that double sided tape. Then we're going to flip this over. And we're going to do the same thing on the right hand side. So this is where our slider panels are going to go. Now this is where I think one of the places I could have improved on is I think I applied my double sided tape just a little too close to the edge. You want it in just a little bit from that edge. So that's kind of tip number one. All of my components still work but I think I could have done better. Now for attaching our decorated panels. So this is the piece where I have the double sided tape on the left hand side and we are going to attach this. This piece is going to pull out to the right. So I'll remove that backing of the double sided tape and here's where I think I kind of messed up on this first one. The right edge of my panel, I want that to line up with the right edge of my track. Mine was just a little bit off. So once I have that pushed down, I'm going to flip this over and now my other panel that's going to pull out to the left, I'm going to flip this over. So my design is facing down. I'm going to remove the backing of that double sided tape. Now this one, I'm going to pause this here for just a second. This one, what I should have done is lined the left edge of my decorated panel up with the left edge of the track. And I think that's kind of a combination of why my slider isn't lining up very well when it's complete. But like I said, it still completely works. And I don't think she's going to notice. 
So now I can flip this over and I can pull my mechanism. It's sliding really well. And like I said, everything works. It just didn't line up as perfectly as I would have liked, but it's still going to work out. Now to work on our actual pocket, I'm attaching that double-sided tape to the top of these flaps. We are going to, going to make this one big piece. Now, this is where it also dawned on me. I did not add my tabs to this plain piece. So I'm going to quickly run that through my die cut machine. Now that both my pieces have those tabs cut out, I can line these up next to each other, remove the backing on one of those flaps. I'm going to butt this up right next to my other panel. And then I'm going to fold that flap over to attach that together. And this is going to create one long piece and also our pocket where our sliding mechanism is going to go. Now I can work on adding my track to the inside. So I actually took my pocket piece, flipped it over so that I have a flap facing up. And then I'm taking my track and I'm just kind of pulling my pages out a little bit so that I can kind of see them and I can grip them and move them. And then I'm removing the backing of that double-sided tape to the top and the bottom on the front. I'm going to flip this over so all of my designs right now are facing my mat and I can line that up inside of my pocket and push that down. Now I'm going to remove the backing on the bottom track piece, just that one for right now, and I'm going to fold that flap up. Now I also kind of wiggle my track a little bit, make sure that none of that is touching that adhesive. So now I have my track. I'm going to remove the backing of that double-sided tape on the top of my track and also on that flap. So now all of our adhesive ex is exposed and I can close that up to seal my pocket. And then I can flip this over and test out my track. And when I uh, kind of open and close it or when I move it, you can see that my edges are not lining up flush all the way. And that's where I kind of suggested things during the video of how I would have did it differently. Like I said, it's still going to work. It's still going to be a surprise for her to open that up and see all these beautiful messages. So they were just little things I would have maybe done a little different. And then I'm just going to come in and add my images with my tape runner. And I'm adding a foam square to the little baby that's going to be in the middle. Now to finish off the rest of the card, I did create a card base that's going to be top folding. And it's going to measure four and a quarter by five and a half. I also took some of the pink spiffy speckles background or pattern paper. Die cut that from the stitched rectangle. And I'm adding that directly on top. And then I also off screen die cut some white cardstock that's just a little bit bigger than what my pocket is going to be. I'm going to add that on top. So it's just giving a little bit of a white border around my pocket piece. I'm going to take foam squares and align the back of my double slider surprise here with the foam squares so that it lifts it up from the cardstock and gives my niece some room to kind of pull those pieces out. So now I have this really cute baby card with this double slider surprise, the addition, additional messages in the inside, and off screen afterwards, I did fill in my scenes a little bit with some lily pads and the lotus flowers. Now, if you struggle with making double slider surprise cards or you've never done it before, I definitely suggest taking just some cheap paper that you don't mind kind of cutting up and just make a practice one. That'll give you an idea of how it works before you do any decorated panels and all of that. And I think that just kind of making a rough draft will really give you the idea. So I hope these tips and tricks have helped you and maybe you can learn from my mistakes. Like I said, it still works out, but things I would have done differently. So I hope those tips have helped you. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you again soon. Bye.